Good afternoon to everyone. It's wonderful to see everyone here, and it's just wonderful that we're able to come together for the Sabbath meeting today. It's nice weather and a day of rest. Well, brethren, as all of us know by now, we live in very troubled times. This past week or so, there was 15 or 18 or 20 children killed in a elementary school in Texas, okay, by someone who went in there with a gun and just gunned them down. And <clears throat> we've had mass shootings and murders and things going on in our society. We've had the COVID virus spread around the world and in this country, and we've been under the gun because of that, so to speak. Sicknesses and car accidents and financial problems, inflation, abortion. We know all these things have been going on and seem to be increasing. And also, our educational system, as we all know, and I have come to understand, is riddled with these here uh, atheistic evolutionists teaching our children the ways of evil and against the laws of our Creator. Well, Paul the Apostle warned us about these days we live in. And I'd like you to turn to 2 Timothy, okay? He told us what these days would be like. It was a prophetic statement he made. He was very emphatic about it. He was informed by our Messiah because he spent three years t being taught by him in the wilderness. That is Paul the Apostle. He was the Apostle to the Gentile nations. And here's what he has to say. 2 Timothy 3, I'm going to read you verses 1 to 4. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful and unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers, of pleasure rather than lovers of our Creator God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power have nothing to do with them. Well, brethren, <clears throat> there is just an inkling as to what is going on today, okay? And it just seems to me that looking at the educational system, what's going on on these campuses around the country, and the drugs, the sex, the alcohol, uh, just uh, campus life is like a warfare against our creator, always, all around. Then we have this warfare in Ukraine and the brutality against the people over there. The threat of nuclear weapons, which we're all aware of. So this track record doesn't look very good, does it? And it's any wonder that people around this country, and I encounter them from time to time because I'm in a, a workplace where I meet all different kinds of people. I meet families and I see children with moms and dads. And for the most part, they seem fairly normal and happy. But then there once in a while, I come upon somebody that's really kind of beaten down in, in their, their looks in their face and sometimes the things they say. But anyway, um, to a lot of people, brethren, who are depressed over these things happening today, they seem beaten down, but and they seem rather hopeless in the way they feel. However, my title today in my talk is Walking with God in Times of Trouble. It is not impossible to walk with our Creator in these times. And here's what he has to say about it. There is, brethren, a wonderful message of hope for all of us, all of mankind, if the majority of people would just listen up and pay attention in these troubled times that we live in today. This hope, brethren, comes directly to us from our Messiah, and is through the Holy Scriptures what he tells us is coming about. Jesus himself, brethren, came that he can bring that he may bring this message to us, this message of hope, this good news, the, the gospel. That's what the word gospel means, good news. I want you to look in the early testament in the book of Habakkuk. Let's turn there briefly. The book of Habakkuk. Okay. Here's something he says, brethren, it's going to come about. 
It's a brief statement, but I've noticed throughout all of the scriptures, a lot of the statements are very brief, but boy, are they ever to the point. I mean, you really think about it, right to the point. There's no mind games or anything like that. It, he tells us as it is and like it is. So here it is, Habakkuk 2. I'm going to read to you verse 14. This is a future event he's talking about. He says here, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There's a brief statement, brethren, right to the point. Knowledge of our Creator God is going to cover this earth in the future. And boy, will that ever be a wonderful thing. I know elsewhere in the scripture it says the word won't have to be preached among people anymore because our Father in heaven will have it instilled in their hearts. He will give them a heart of flesh. He will take out the heart of stone. And they will understand our Father in heaven and his, his only begotten Son. And they will live accordingly. All the sin and lawlessness we see today, brethren, the sufferings that go with it, are because of human blindness and ignorance. People aren't interested. Uh, they reject the laws and the knowledge of our Creator. Jesus himself, brethren, tells us to pray to him every day. Pray to our Creator God and seek him first. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness every day. I'd like you to turn over to the book of Matthew. Matthew tells a lot of things about these days we live in, but let's look at Matthew. Okay. First book of the early of the New Testament, Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read to you verses 8 to 13. Okay. Matthew chapter 6. Now this prayer Brethren, all of us have said and are aware of it in times past, but I'm going to read it anyway. It's very, very important because it has a very wonderful message in it. Matthew 6, verses 8 to 13. It says, Do not be like the people of the societies and around the world, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. There's a, a, song, a, a prayer, brethren, that... I learned it when I was very, very young, and I do say it from time to time, again and again, that his kingdom come to this earth, because we certainly need it. We need his kingdom age rule. We need our Father in heaven, his rulership over men. And we have to, I have to say to everyone here, brethren, that our Father in heaven will provide and protect us always in all things. I'm going to read to you in the same chapter, verses 25 to 34. 25 to 34. It's about not worrying. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God, our Creator God clothed, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will not he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? 
For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, wor will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And isn't that true? Each day. Jesus himself said, tomorrow has its own evils and things going on every day. I mean, he said that to his apostles. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Said, tomorrow will take care of itself, so to speak. Now, brethren, um, I want to read to you what, tell, what Paul the Apostle says in 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 16, as to what's in store for us. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> this is about wisdom, brethren, wisdom from the Spirit the spirit of our creator. Paul tells us here, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of our eternal God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that our creator God in heaven destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified our Creator, our Father in heaven, or the Lord of glory, that is Jesus himself. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what our eternal God has prepared for those who love him. But our Creator God has revealed it to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of our Creator God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of our Creator God except the spirit of our Creator in heaven. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from our Creator God, that we may understand what our Creator God freely has given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord, our Creator in heaven, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Boy, what, what words they are, brethren, about the spirit of our Creator working in our lives and telling us and showing us. We are greatly privileged to have that knowledge. Believe me, we are. Well, brethren, in closing, let's, let's live in accordance with what hope of the future is going to bring to us. Let's trust in these promises that our Messiah gave us through his prophets in the Early Testament and all through for the last 3,000 years he's been telling us. Actually, the last 6,000 years he's been trying to tell us how to live right. And he sent his only begotten son as a propitiation and, and to, to pay for our sins. So let's keep our minds as best we can focused on him and his coming king mage rule. And that, brethren, is the key to walking with God in these troubled times. There's one more scripture I want to bring out, written in Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So brethren, let's be of good cheer in spite of all that's going on around us.